So again, my name is Jeremy Covey. For those that don't know me, I'm the coordinator for Real World Learning. Um, it's an initiative that really ties into what we're doing with Portrait of a Graduate here at the high school and K-12. Our goal this year is to implement it a little bit more in the elementary, more in the middle school, and even more in the high school. Uh, the new teachers, uh, last week heard about all the things we do with Real World Learning. Um, we have a lot of things going on within this building, a little bit at the middle school, and then we do one thing at the elementary currently career on wheels for our fifth graders. And so um, I go to a lot of meetings at Kaufman for Real World Learning, and I got to hear from some students last year, and I thought that was a really good idea as far as being impactful, because I can stand up here and talk to you all day, but sit and get from me is not as much fun as listening to our students who have been there and done that with some of the programs that we have, and they've gone through center school districts since they were in kindergarten. And so they, they've kind of been here, um, three graduates on the stage, uh, one graduating this year. Uh, so I'm gonna introduce them. I had a few that were not able to make it. First here is Susan Basson. Uh, she graduated in 24. Susan went to Summit Tech Academy. Uh, she did business and finance and fin fintech. She did the Missouri Innovation Campus Program internship, and she's going to continue the MIC program pathway at UCM. Is that correct? With UCM. Okay. Next to her, Susan, our scholar of the song. Scholar will graduate this year. Um, scholar and I probably meet two, three times a week. Because Scholar is always wanting to push herself and get as much out of what we do here at the high school. Uh, she's currently doing an early college academy. She did a student law internship two summers ago, Pro-X. She's going to try something this year. Uh, she's going to try to do two programs at once. She's going to do CMA and she's going to do early college. Um, I have a few girls in my class and a few seniors this year. Uh, they started early college going into their junior year and they want to try this and I have the utmost confidence that they will be successful in doing that. Um, after high school, she plans to attend U of KC and get a Bachelor of Science in Biology. All right. Brandon Chandler. Uh, we're going to 22. Yeah, in 2022, he did Early College Academy. He was one of my first students to go through Early College Academy. He was here before I was here. Um, he is, you graduated from Mizzou, is that correct? I'm still. You're still, when do you graduate? Uh, 2026. 2026. And so he is currently working at KU Med. Uh, and he will talk to you about how Early College kind of got him going in Mizzou to get ahead of the game. And the last person I have here is Sean Strickland. He graduated, graduated in 21. Uh, he was here before me, so I'll be curious to hear how much our broadcast program has grown. Uh, but he, his real world learning experience was high TV with LT and Global. Uh, his plans, he's currently UMKC communications major, and he also works for LT and Global as a director for various sports events. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off. Um, Sean didn't know this, but I, I, hopefully I educated him a little bit more. So, for those of you that don't know, in Real World Learning, our goal is by 2030 to have every student graduate with an MBA. Uh, an MBA is an entrepreneurial experience, client project, an internship, dual credits. Um, I'm missing one. Um, it'll come to me anyway. So, our goal is for them to graduate with that. All of these kids have an, an MBA. Um, so, Susan, I'm going to start with you. What MBAs did you earn while you were here at Center? So, at Center, I was in the entrepreneurship program. Um, I had the MBA with our market day, uh, spring and fall, which essentially our class would make businesses and we'd purchase products and then sell them back to students and then generate income. And then I also went to Summit Technology Academy. My junior year, I did business finance and fine tech, and then I got 12. Uh, college credits through microeconomics, personal finance, um, accounting, and computer information systems. Along with that, I also got a Microsoft certification in Excel, Word, and all the Microsoft products. And then my senior year, I joined the software development program in the, through the MIC program, 
and I acquired, I believe, 15 college credits between Python, Java, and then data um, analytics. So that was what I acquired at Center. How about you, Scholar? The MPAs I acquired at Center, I acquired 23 college credit through MCC, which um, are transferable to any college in Missouri. And I participated in a student law internship, um, and I had the opportunity to connect with my peers from different schools all over Missouri. Through Early College Academy, I got um, about 32 college credits before I even entered college. And um, also through taking a chaos class, which is computer hardware and operating systems, I got an IT certification. So those were actually very good transferable things happening in my field before I even entered college. So my senior year, of course, as Mr. Covey said, uh, after we left, you guys wanted to start all the good stuff. <laughs> so, um, I did participate in a client project, though, with Hive TV, with the Hive TV program. We were able to partner with LT and Global and they basically sent a liaison for each of our basketball games and football games to be sure to you know bring it out to all of our viewers like you that support and love our students here and so we were able to bring that to youtube and stream to youtube under the espn3 platform which also guaranteed that anybody with the espn app and anything like that would be able to watch so it it really brought in it, it put center more out there to be able to you know, showcase our students and our athletes and everybody that, you know, we wanted to do that, hey, you know, we're not just a small district, we are a small district, but at the same time, we're able to do things that these big districts are doing, and now they're continuing, and it's really grown, so, shout out to TV. So, Sean, you had said that you're currently at UMKC, what are your plans once you graduate from UMKC? So once I graduate UMKC, my plan is to stick with LTN Global for now. LTN Global is a small media company. I say small, but we do a lot of um, shows and media shows. Like we just did the Olympics and we're doing, you know, college football and college sports and everything like that. But the ultimate goal would be to move up to, you know, these bigger markets like, you know, CBS Sports and Fox Sports and everything like that. My goal is to do what I'm doing here at LTN Global. So I would stick with LT and Global. And like you said, I'm a, I'm a director and technical director and basically short term is that when you, I know there's probably a lot of Chiefs fans in here, unfortunately. No <laughs> <laughs> um, <El> Broncos. But, <laughs> but when, you, uh, when you're watching your TVs and you, and you, When you're watching your TVs and you see the camera angle switch and you see all of the stat lines for the players and the coaches, that's basically what we're doing inside of a production truck. That high TV was really able to, you know, throw us into that environment. And it was really an environment that you don't think about unless you're behind the scenes. And it really just opened my eyes. So I'd love to do that for the rest of my life. That's my plan after you and Casey. So Brandon spoke about uh, being at the zoo, getting a lot of credit hours here at Watt Center. Brandon, tell us about how getting those hours here at Center kind of helped you at the zoo get, get ahead of the game and what you plan to do and what degree you're seeking and what you're doing at KU Med. Yeah, so all the credits I got at the zoo actually went towards my gen ed. So I was pretty much done with gen ed before I even got to the zoo. So as soon as I got there, I just went straight to all my content classes and it actually advanced me so much that I could actually graduate this year with a bachelor's in bioscience. So, I, but I didn't want to waste all that extra scholarship money for the other three semesters. So I decided I'll just get another major. So now I'm a double major in bioscience and bioengineering. And, and that opens up so many opportunities, and it also allowed me to explore different like career paths. 
And that's kind of why, like, my goal now after I graduate is just to kind of, kind of pursue a lot of internship opportunities to see what I really want to do. Like, uh, right now I'm working at KU Med Center and I'm studying, like, I'm doing research, and I'm looking at, like, both cells, because I'm a bio, I'm a bio major, but um, I also want to try, uh, like, bioengineering and then, like, like, biomechanical engineering. And I would say that Early College Academy absolutely gave me that boost. And it is probably the only reason why they really was. is also in Ridley College, and again, as I said, she's going to do CMA this year, which I think is going to be extremely challenging, um, but out of our senior class, she's probably one of the ones that can do it out of the students in that class. So, Scholar, you, you say you want to go to UMKC, Bachelor of Science in Biology. What do, you, what do you want to do with that degree? With that degree, I hope to pursue a field in science or a field in healthcare. And when I get my medical assistant certification, I also plan to work at uh, KU Med. Um, MCC has opened a lot of avenues for me and I have the time to grow and mature because I had the opportunity to do it here while I had the support from all my teachers. Susan, same question for you as far as uh, you're going to continue with MIC through UCM. What are you, what are you seeking at UCM uh, as far as your major goes? So my major is software engineering and I'm doing a minor technology certificate mixing mechanical and robotics engineering. That's what I'm doing at UCM. And in terms of the MIC program, I'm actually going to my sophomore year. By the time I finished high school, I had around like 65 college credits. And like Brandon, it went into my gen eds. So I was able to add something additional to my major to cover that four year time. But yeah. It's definitely put me ahead of the game. I'm a lot more knowledgeable. And along with the MIC program, actually, I was placed in an internship last or this February for Tyler Technologies, which is an S&P 500 company that deals with the public sector. So I definitely, I, it's definitely put me ahead of all of my peers. So this this question is kind of a rewind question for all of you. What would you tell your ninth grade self about high, about high school and about real world learning opportunities and, and how to approach those or take advantage of them? What would you tell yourself so these teachers can hear it, they can share your message with students in the district? I have a couple actually. I think one thing I did really well was choosing the right people to be around me. Those people who care about their education, care about succeeding, are gonna put you, make you stay focused when it matters most. So definitely surround yourself with people who care about school, care about the future, and then also let your dreams be known. All of the opportunities have come to me, have come simply because I said, this is what I want to do in my life, these are my dreams. And the teachers are able to kind of connect me to the people who can make that dream come true. And then also make connections with your counselors and real world learning. Again, these are the people putting you in those programs. And I think that also the most important thing is your reputation. Making sure you again surround yourself with people, making sure people know you have someone who's trustworthy and someone who gets stuff done, says what they're going to do when he does it. So I think all in all, reputation, having good friends, and getting yourself out there. I would tell my ninth grade self to cherish every single moment because it all goes by in the blink of an eye. I would also tell myself to be mature in the little things that seem so big at the time are so small when you look back. And when you enter high school, there's a lot of opportunities and you might feel overwhelmed, but instead of sitting in silence, you should always reach out for help because the adults here care about you and they support you and they will guide you through any problem you're having. I would definitely tell myself to just get up and do it. Like any opportunity that comes up, just do it. It don't matter how small it is or how insignificant it seems, just just do it. Because at first I didn't want to do early college academy. It seemed like a lot of work and, and it was, but man did it pay off. So I would tell him 
always seek those opportunities, not only just pursue them, but like seek them out because I'm always gonna be rewarded at the end. So my answer is kind of along the lines of Brandon, just being able to um, really seize your moment with those opportunities. My senior year was, you know, the big COVID year. And I was supposed to be serving as the drum major for the instrumental music program that year, but obviously, you know, we couldn't play anything, so we never did anything. And in light of that, Hive TV, Mr. Parker sought me out, and he said, you know, because you're a leader here, maybe you can be a leader in this area. And I was really scared when he said that because Mr. May told me when we became drum majors that it is not a glorious position, and he was right. <laughs> I mean, it is, it's blood and sweat and tears and everything that comes with being a leader. And I'm sure a lot of you know about what it, be, what it means to be a leader. And it was just not what I thought it was going to be, but I don't regret it at all. So when Mr. Parker came to me and he said, you know, you should try to, you know, take on this position, I just said, okay. And I, I took a leap of faith. And I think that's what I would tell myself back then, like, seize your moment. I think that's the biggest thing. When these opportunities arise, and like Brandon said, you know, seek them out. Don't wait for them to, don't wait for the doors to open. Sometimes you have to kick them down and really seize your moment. Look for these opportunities. Be able to have the courage and the confidence and the strength to believe in yourself that you can do whatever you set your mind to. And this is the last question before we open it up to you all for questions, but they have the microphone now. And so what would you tell these teachers uh, at all levels, K through 12, how can they help with students with real world learning, exploring uh, opportunities and careers, and how can they help tie real world learning into their classrooms to make what they're learning as relevant as possible? So I don't know how things have changed since I've graduated. It could be better since then. Not saying it was bad, but um, I'm, I'm sure they're doing a great job now. And I think back then, something that was really, they did a really good job of the instructors here at Center High School. They did a really good job of preparing us for what college would be like and trying to prepare us for what to expect. And I think just through my personal experience with my graduating class, you know, a lot of them don't actually want to attend college. And so they're looking for other avenues to be entrepreneurs and other things that don't require as much schooling because, you know, we've gone to school for 13 years straight, they might want a break. But they're looking for other avenues and I think something that could really benefit them is just being able to open the door to other opportunities that don't revolve around post-secondary education and just being able to, you know, have these different programs like, um, I think I remember something about a firefighter program or something um, that Center was doing here, but that's the first one that comes to mind. Just these other avenues and directions that Center can take that don't revolve around, hey, you need to go to college, hey, you need to get this degree to be successful because we all know what being successful means is different to different people. So it's, it's imperative that we're able to put into their minds that this is not the only way to go. And being able to have programs and partner with different businesses in the area and being able to even open the doors to um, you know, national businesses that might, that might want to help put Center on the map, that they're able to put out these students that are capable of doing things that are not college related and opening these, you know, programs and different things like that. So really just almost shying away from the idea that college is for everyone because it's not. And I know that you all know that in your head. So I would say three main things. The first thing is always try to tie what you're teaching in class to real world things like real world careers and just how how even the learning can help you in everyday life. Especially like even in my everyday life, I do like constantly use like the math that I've learned in like 
school and college, just, just for little things. So I would always say, even like a lot of students have the perception that what they learn in school won't really help them in real life, and that's just simply not true. So I would say, uh, try and always make an effort to like express that what you're learning will actually help you in real life. Um, the second thing is, I would say, try and push the students a little more because every student has a passion for something, even if they don't know what it is. So always try and push students to either pursue certain opportunities or even join clubs um, because a lot of what we've done, um, like with, with our real world learning experience has been through clubs. So just push students because their passion will come out eventually and once you like take notice of that, then you can really push them to make their dream a reality. And then last, I would say, it's called real world learning for a reason. You gotta get them out in the real world. Like, for instance, um, <clears throat> in my chaos class, um, we actually, one day we actually went out and um, toured a, a cybersecurity firm. And uh, it was like, they gave us like a tour of the building and then they gave us like, like an overview of what people do there. And that was like a real, like an out, like a real world um, company. And um, even one of my good friends today uh, is like working there. So those opportunities really do help uh, students get out into the world. I think we do a lot of stuff like within the community, which is definitely good. But um, at the end of the day, we gotta get students up out into the world. So if a student comes to you seeking advice on an avenue they should take, you would be able to give them a response. And pertaining to how to incorporate more we're learning into classes, um, two teachers that I believe did a really great job of doing that is Mr. May and Ms. Tiffany. I've seen Mr. May bring in speakers to come and talk to his class, and it's been really impactful. And I participated in Elevate, and we went to Center Elementary, and I had the opportunity to connect with those kids. And some of those kids really went to the middle school and I still speak with till this day. And those experiences impacted me a lot. And I believe it's really important to incorporate in classes. And kind of what Brandon said that you should stress the importance of your class because every single class is a building block. Like if you don't do good in Algebra 1, you should see Geometry, you should see Algebra 2, like it all builds upon each other. So you should stress those fundamentals and they should know that their education is important. Sometimes it's easy to stray away, but you should try to bring them back. I think soft skills are really important which should be emphasized in classrooms, whether it's math and you're analyzing uh, problems or it's reading and you're analyzing text. I think those soft skills are something that is, you're gonna use them in the real world regardless of what major or what job you enter. And also classes like uh, Mr. Simpson's entrepreneurship class or debate, I feel were very big building blocks into getting me ahead of the game in terms of communicating my thoughts and communicating with people, being um, able to stand in front of people and talk. I think those classes were definitely beneficial. In terms of clubs, I know Hive TV is, is a, a club that's putting those students out there. DECA was another club that Scholar and I did. And we, we went internationally to California and we, competed against people from all over the world and I definitely 100% believe that it pushed me and impacted me in a positive way. And also listening to your students and as scholars said, knowing the programs in the school. So if you see a student who has a dream is, is a little shy to come up to the counselor's office and talk to Mr. Covey or, or Ms. Bellamy or Mr. Mendez, that you can kind of make that connection for them so that they can have a building block to make sure the schedule aligns with the requirements going into these programs so that they're more prepared. And kind of to put my own experience, um, I was not, MIC program starts my junior year, but I started it in my senior year. And I simply started it because I communicated my dreams to my teacher, um, my uh, Mr. Woodward at Summit Tech. And he connected me with their coordinator for MIC program, connected me with the software development program. And from there, I was able to go to a all paid trip to Utah for a Python international conference. And it solidified my opinion to join software engineering and 
it completely changed my life. So making sure you talk to your, your kids and know their dreams and try to make those connections is something that helps incorporate real world learning into the school. Okay, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Does anybody have any questions for our scholars here on stage? Anything about what, they, what they've experienced, um, future things that they would like to accomplish, challenges they came across? Mr. Mayor.
Go ahead, we have a question over there. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. So um, one thing we do already do with our students when our eighth graders come over, uh, they get to come in here and listen to me, which is probably not as much fun. Um, our student government kids give them a tour around the building, but then they get to go in the small gym and it's called Ignite. And so they go in and they get to see every pathway that we offer here at the high school, but it's our students presenting to the eighth graders uh, just to tell them about, hey, this is what we have at the high school. But I wholeheartedly agree that hearing some of this stuff uh, would be impactful as well. So I'm hearing tour. You guys are going on tour, right? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Before I go, oh, yep, sorry, go ahead. I'm going to try to restate the best I can. Basically, if a, if a student hasn't been engaged until their junior or senior year, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? If you met them as a junior and they're going into their senior year, they still have an opportunity to join a new program. Like, I'm doing CMA this year, and I did MCC last year. Well, I'm doing MCC too, but I'm doing MCC and CMA. And if they're a senior, and you know there's like, outside of real-world learning, there's other opportunities that they could um, utilize, like there's Casey Scholars, that there's different scholarships, like there's, the world is so big and there's so many opportunities and you should just direct them to those opportunities and they can pursue that in college. So for, yeah, like Scholar said, there's definitely, there's opportunities to do, you can go into as a senior, but if you're a senior, I would say ask questions and buy it because there's always a way to like bubble your way into opportunity, no matter what. Just have to continue asking. Um, I definitely uh, feel that there's other opportunities outside of the ones that close. Like I know some at Tech, they have a hard deadline. Herndon probably has a hard deadline. There's also cosmetology school and barber school and MCC. That if you show enough drive and you show enough initiative, the, the our real coordinators can place you in those programs. So I guess it definitely is person by person. Depends on how hard you want to fight, but just finding a way to squeeze into something that adds value to your life and adds value to what you want to do in your future. Any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna share a couple things before I, I let these guys go. Um, most of you have heard me say this multiple times. I have the best job in the district and you can understand why. Um, I get to provide opportunities for our students um, that a lot of districts aren't able to provide. Um, and so I do a lot of things, much like a lot of you, my day starts and I go 100 miles an hour to the end of the day. And sometimes I get to drive a van. Um, and I had one other young lady that was supposed to be here and she couldn't make it today. Um, she graduated this year. I won't give her name, but, and if I get choked up, I apologize. Um, we were driving back from her last day um, of clinicals. She was done. And uh, she had her CNA. And we we're talking, I said, hey, would you like to be a part of the student panel? She said, I would love to tell my story. I said, well, what do you mean? She goes, as a junior, I was ready to drop out of high school. Uh, she goes, I was not in a good place with my mental health and you guys saved me. Um, and so to hear that from a student is so impactful. Um, and just to be able to do that for our students and provide them what we are able to do, um, it's, a, it's a credit to all of you uh, to get them to me. Uh, and, and for me to be able to provide it and our school board to be able to pr provide the funding to do, to, to, to do these things uh, is so impactful. And I heard Dr. Casey say it last week. She goes, we are, we are along with this other South Kansas City high schools, right at the, we're at the peak of what real world learning should look like and we continue to grow. Um, we're adding programs in the high school this year. Um, 
and I said it last week to the new teachers, we're getting ready to open a coffee shop in the back of our high school here for our students' school store. We have screen printing equipment ready to start printing merch. Um, so we're, we're providing more. We have, a, we have our own TV station that we just got the equipment for last week. Um, and so we continue to grow this program, uh, not only with the help of the school board, but from all of you guys, the Cawthon Foundation. Um, it's just amazing to me what we're able to do. Uh, one of them said something about soft skills and different things and how to be a leader. And you all notice, I think it's either tomorrow or Thursday, my days are all mixed up, but we're going to all talk about agilities and how that ties into real world learning, for children and graduate. It's not just for our kids, it's for all of you as well to understand where you fit in your PLC. Um, central office, we went and did agilities training in June. Um, I got my agilities back and I was a little surprised, but then my wife's like, are you really, are you sure you're surprised? Because she calls me spectrally. Um, but, uh, and I'm okay with that, it's 100% true. But she's like, you're an organizer, that's what you do all day long. Um, so we have to understand where we fit as adults in our teams, but then it gives the kids a better idea of where they fit, uh, whether it be in the classroom or out in the real world, and we need to be able to provide those skills for our students to understand where they fit and keep providing opportunities. As a district staff, you guys will see Orchard of a Graduate, you'll see our pathway work that we're doing here at the high school, so you can articulate that to the kids K through 12. Like when you get in high school, these are the things you can see. Um, you will also be getting uh, information about Connector again. They just relaunched a new site. Um, so there's a lot coming with real world learning. It's highly important information. And I know um, I've taught the gamut from uh, elementary to high school. There's a lot to do in your day. Uh, and any way you can tie real world learning into it will benefit our kids well beyond what they have once they graduate here. So um, I would like you guys to give this group a, a round of applause because we have lots to have a good